Germany, the powerhouse of innovation and precision engineering, is facing a challenge that's shaking its very foundation. The loss of Russian gas has sent shockwaves through the heartland of the European economy. And in this video, we're going to unravel the story of how Germany's downfall just got a whole lot worse. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Welcome to Tech Revolution, and now, let us get this video started. In recent decades, Germany enjoyed lots of economic success, like making fancy cars and high-tech stuff that everyone wanted to buy. They were so good at it, and they made tons of money by selling things to people in other countries, and their government had a lot of cash. People even wrote books about how Germany was doing things right. But things have changed. Now, Germany is not doing so well in the world economy. It's one of the worst among rich countries. The International Monetary Fund and the European Union say Germany's economy is going to shrink this year. People in Germany are really worried about this. They're afraid that their country might lose its factories and good jobs because it's getting too expensive to make stuff there. The boss of a big German chemical company says Germany might stop being an industrial powerhouse. He looks out of his fancy office and sees old factories and mines that used to be important but aren't anymore. Now the place where coal mines used to make everything dirty is becoming clean. They've got wind turbines and green areas instead of pollution. But losing the cheap Russian gas hurt Germany's economy. They even had to ask a company to keep an old power plant running because they didn't have enough energy. That company is trying to change things. They're going to use gas and maybe hydrogen instead of dirty coal to make stuff. They want to be good for the environment by 2030. But for now, Germany is in a tough spot because of what's happening outside their borders. One idea that's causing a big argument is whether the government should set a limit on how much factories can be charged for electricity while they switch to clean energy. This idea is proposed by Vice Chancellor Robert Habeck from the Greens Party, but not everyone likes it. Chancellor Olaf Scholz and his friends from the Free Democrats think it's a bad idea. And so do environmentalists who say it would keep us using dirty energy for longer. But Christian Coleman, the boss of that big chemical company we talked about earlier, thinks it's a good plan. He says that bad decisions from politicians cost the high energy prices and it's not fair for German businesses and workers to pay for those mistakes. Gas prices have doubled since 2021 and that's causing trouble for companies that need gas to make things like glass, paper, and car parts. Plus, China, one of Germany's biggest trade buddies, isn't doing so well economically anymore. All these problems show that Germany has some problems it didn't notice during the good times. They're not very good at using technology in government and business, and it takes forever to approve clean energy projects. Germany also didn't spend money on things like roads, trains, and internet in the countryside. And that's why they had extra cash before. Depending on Russia for gas was also a mistake, especially with the Nord Stream pipelines, which were turned off because of the war. And now it's really hard to build wind turbines because people don't want them near their homes. There's even a big delay in a project to bring wind power to the southern part of the country. Meanwhile, the United States is giving lots of money to companies that want to invest in clean energy. And that's making Germany jealous and worried that they're falling behind. So everyone is competing to have the best technologies that make money and help the country grow. And Germany is trying to figure out how to keep up. But what is causing the continued plummeting of Germany's economy? The loss of cheap natural gas from Russia has contributed to the problem, but the decisions made during the prosperous years are also being questioned. The days are gone when jobs were abundant and the government's coffer swelled while other European nations grappled with debt. Germany was even held up as a model for others to follow. 
Today, both the International Monetary Fund and the European Union predict Germany will shrink this year. This downturn came in the wake of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine and the subsequent loss of cheap natural gas from Moscow. This was a severe jolt to Germany's energy-intensive industries, which have long driven Europe's manufacturing sector. This sudden economic underperformance has sparked a flurry of criticism, debates, and disagreements about the way forward. Germany faces the risk of deindustrialization due to high energy costs and energy inaction on other persistent issues. Christian Kuhlmann, the CEO of the significant German chemical company Evonik Industries AG, supports government-funded limits on industrial electricity prices to help the country transition to renewable energy. He believes that political decisions led to high energy costs and that it's unfair for German industry and workers to bear the burden. The loss of cheap Russian natural gas, necessary to power continuous operations in factories, has severely impacted industries that rely on keeping materials like glass and metal hot 24-7 to produce items used in buildings and cars. Another blow came with China, a crucial trading partner, slowing down after decades of robust economic growth. These external shocks have revealed underlying weaknesses in Germany's foundation that were overlooked during the years of prosperity. These issues include a delay in adopting digital technology in government and business and a cumbersome process for approving renewable energy projects. There's also been a realization that the government's financial surplus was partly due to procrastination in investing in infrastructure like roads, railways, and rural broadband internet. Germany's decision to close its last nuclear power plants in 2011 has also come under scrutiny due to concerns about electricity prices and shortages. Businesses are grappling with a severe shortage of skilled workers, with nearly 2 million job openings, a record high. Moreover, Germany's reliance on Russia for gas via the Nord Stream pipelines under the Baltic Sea, built during Angela Merkel's tenure as chancellor and since close and damaged due to the war, has been deemed a mistake. Clean energy projects are facing significant bureaucratic hurdles and public resistance. Restrictions on the proximity of wind turbines to homes have limited their construction to single digits annually in southern Bavaria. A 10 billion euro power line meant to support wind power from the north to the southern industrial regions faced delays due to resistance to overhead towers. Burying the lines means it won't be completed until 2028 instead of 2022. In the meantime, energy-intensive companies are exploring ways to cope with the price shock. For example, Druze's Special Papiri, which produces paper for passports, stamps, and paper straws, has purchased three wind turbines to generate a quarter of its electricity and reduce reliance on natural gas. Specialty glass manufacturer Schott AG has experimented with emissions-free hydrogen to replace gas in its high-temperature glass production. However, this solution requires significant hydrogen production from renewable sources, which isn't yet available. Chancellor Olaf Scholz has called for treating the energy transition as an emergency and establishing four floating natural gas terminals to quickly replace Russian gas. However, disagreements within the government coalition over energy price caps and a law prohibiting new gas furnace installations have frustrated business leaders. Holger Schmidding, chief economist at Berenberg Bank, believes that during the golden decade of economic growth from 2010 to 2020, Germany became complacent. While he once labeled Germany as the sick man of Europe in 1998, he now sees this label as exaggerated, considering Germany's low unemployment rate and solid public finances. Schmidting believes that Germany has room to act, but there's less pressure to make changes. According to Mr. Schmidting, the most crucial immediate step is to eliminate uncertainty regarding energy prices. Regardless of the chosen policies, it would be highly beneficial for the government to quickly reach a consensus so that businesses can plan instead of delaying their investment decisions. And that's it for this video. 
Thanks for tuning in to this video on Germany's economic challenges due to the loss of Russian gas. But before we finally say goodbye, let me ask you this. Do you think Germany can bounce back from this setback? What measures do you believe should be taken to secure its economic future? Leave your answers and insights in the comments section below. If you found this video informative, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Tech Revolution for more content. Thank you for watching and see you again in our next videos.